sniffed at it and presented it to her. She lifted her hand, but tears ran down her cheeks and she couldn't see the flower. It fell down. Let it lie where it is, he said. Fallen flowers bring no luck. Tomorrow I shall bring you another flower, more beautiful, my dear. Ha <laughs> ha, said the nag to the bronze war horse. He never will come back and drive around with her. He never took the same girl twice on a trip. She will never get another flower. Shut up now, said the war horse. You bore me with your story. What do I care about the silly girl and the fallen flower? And as a fact, I have had some experiences myself, but quite different from yours. You have to remember that I was created by the greatest artist who ever walked on earth. He thought it out, and piece by piece he built me up. As I stand here, cast in bronze and gilded, I embody the highest, purest idea of a horse. I am the ideal war horse. Also, I carry a great warrior, a king, on my back, and this I did already for some hundred years. I hope you understand what I mean. A war horse like myself carries a hero, a king, in the back. Observe my nostrils. They are wide open, as if I gallop in the front line, right into the fiercest battle. When people look up to me, they feel all that precedes the real action, the nervosity, the excitement, the chaos. They hear the beat of the battle drums, the, sh the shrill sound of the trumpets and horns, the cries and shouting and the roaring and the stamping of the other horses. Great care was given by the artist to the shape of my tail. I do hope you recognized it too. I am absolutely sure that no living horse possesses such a tail as I do. Also extraordinary, and I would like to say unique, is of course my head. You should know that my creator had made hundreds of drawings before he found this matchless solution. It's most characteristic, very expressive. I'm rather pleased with it. I'm also pleased at how my creator, the great artist, shaped my profile. Look at it. Move with your eyes slowly down from the forehead, along the nose and down to the upper lip. Feel the gentle, graceful curve. Absorb it. You must agree there is no other nose like mine, neither man-made nor least of all on a living horse. I do believe it is the finest horse profile ever designed. Not even the horse gods have done better. Never. Yes, my head is so to speak. My head is so to speak the absolute idea of all horses of higher descendants. I mean, those few race horses with truly blue blood in their veins and whose names appear in the golden book. My whole figure is, of course, a perfect masterwork and an absolute ideal of... Acne J didn't hear the end of the talk. A pair, elderly people, had entered the cab and the driver pulled the reins and she had to go. Hackney Jade said, sorry, sir, I'll be back soon. Warhorse raised his voice and said, remember you, my legs are considered to be the most beautiful legs in the kingdom of horses. They're called classical. Remember, classical. Critics applaud me. Art historians adore. Shuffling and clippity-clopping along, Hackney Jade, Hackney Jade was thinking and talking to herself. Maybe Warhorse is right. His legs do look real fine. I guess my legs never could compare with his. He called them the most beautiful legs in the kingdom of horses. Well, I doubt that. There must be still more beautiful legs around, but I don't know. Anyway, I have arthritis. My front knees are bent and stiff, and I can hardly move them or walk. The hind legs are also suffering from arthritis. They're inflexible and very sore. Of course, Hackney Jane told herself, in earlier years, my legs were quite all right. I could gallop and even a little jumping, not too much. 
when I'm back, I will tell all this to the sir, the war horse. Trouble is, he never listens. He's just too arrogant. I think I do not like that man-made cast metal gilded war horse and the way it looks down at me. Yes, I do feel that standing on three legs for hundreds of years is much worse than walking on four legs with arthritic pain. I feel bad when I have to stand there, waiting for passengers for hours and hours, but I stand on four legs, not just three. I think that makes a difference. And what about the profile? I think some profiles of horses I've seen are much more interesting. I know they do not look as elegant as the profile of a war horse, but they are, in a sense, more characteristic. I recall one profile, which was to me a very fine one. It had an unexpected bend, not too harsh, rather gentle. And as I learned later, it was the result of a fall, a nose bone fracture. Well, it was an outstanding profile. How charming. I fell in love with the profile, or to be correct, with him. We had a baby. Unfortunately, it did not inherit the characteristic nose of the father. The baby had just a regular horse nose, no bend. Of course, we loved our filly just the same. The name for her was Anaina. People called her, come on, silly. Later, she got the name, Astoria. When Hackney Jade was back again, she was too tired to talk to the sir of the war horse. But next day, after a good night's sleep, she felt better. She lifted her head, <clears throat> cleared her throat, scratched with her left front hoof, and said, Brother Warhorse, I want to tell you something which bothered me for some time. And here it happened that the Hackney Jade had to leave again, and somebody had hired the cab. As a fact, the nag was rather glad to leave the place. Hackney Jade was actually not a talker. On the other hand, she was easily tired, often just too hungry to listen to another tirade of the bronze horse. It was always the same story, and just plain boring. Trotting along, Hackney Jade contemplated about war horse. She told herself that a true horse was, after all, had a father and mother, and did he, the Sir Horse, the War Horse, have them? No, there was no father, there was no mother. And how can one understand the fact that a human being, a so-called artist, had created the War Horse? He was made from carefully selected parts based on intense study of actual living horses. So it's a well-planned construction, a so-called ideal creature. It's a known fact, minimum to horses, that there is always a slight chance that some accident occurs, that an offspring doesn't turn out as expected. Two racehorses do not make a super, super, super racer, and very often the offspring is not particularly good at all, I mean in point of speed. It may have some talent in other ways, but it lacks speed, endurance, proper coordination. Actually, these so highly praised monument horses, like the ideal war horse, stand and stand and wait until time, rain, wind do their destructive job. Or as it happened during wartime, bronze monuments are melted down and recast into cannon barrels. When I go back, I will tell the bronze horse exactly how I feel. I am glad that I can move around, even from time to time only, but it's moving. In short, there are limits. The same applies to horses made by man. I just can't believe in man-made horses at all. Those horses are artificial. They're based on strange ideas. Most important is the fact they're made to remain standing on some foundation of stone, polished, or rough. They're cast in metal or carved in stone or wood. I understand that some are even made of plaster of Paris. What a disgrace.